Fethullah Gulen. Fethullah Gulen is one of the more remarkable people um, whose writings over the last several years I have been studying rather carefully. He is an individual, it seems to me, who falls very much in line with the direction that Sufism takes, that is to say, Muslim mysticism takes, particularly in the writings of people like Rumi and like Ibn Arabi, in the following manner. One of the things that one recognizes as a mystic, I mean a true mystic, I don't mean someone who vaguely talks about mysticism, a true mystic realizes that if his or her goal is in a certain fundamental way to become one for a moment with God, with the innermost recesses of God, then the only way that can happen is if he or she empties self of self. If I am to be filled with God, I have to empty myself of myself or there's too much of me in the way. And so, for example, if my intention is to gain enlightenment for myself, it won't work. I won't succeed as a mystic because that's too selfish. My intention has to be to gain enlightenment in order to come back from that experience and share it with the community around me and improve the community around me. So with that in mind, a Sufi like Ibn Arabi or a Sufi like Rumi recognizes that being so certain that only my way of thinking in terms of religion or anything else for that matter bespeaks a kind of egotism which is overly filled with self and I have to empty myself in order to be filled with God. So Gulen, it strikes me, comes from that kind of a sensibility. He is a student, of course, of Islam in general. He's a student of the wider world of both religion and science, literature and history, as broadly as one can imagine, and thinking historically all the way back, let's say, to Socrates. But he is also within the realm of Islam a profound Sufi, and a Sufi who is particularly aware of and has thought and written a great deal about what people like even Arabi and Rumi have thought and written. And so with that in mind, he strikes me as a kind of perfect paradox. He recognizes that for him and for those around him, the most perfect religion on the planet is Islam. But at the same time, he also recognizes that for others who are Jews or Christians or Hindus, for them, their form of faith is the most perfect on the planet for them. And each and every one of these forms of faith has something to contribute to a larger conversation about faith, about God, and more important than that, in a sense, what with God or even without God in our minds we can do to improve the world. So the movement that sometimes bears his name, the Gulen movement, or more recently as, and I'm, I'm happy to report because I think it's important, has begun to be called simply the Hizmet movement, and the word hizmet in Turkish means service, is a movement that applies the theory of all of this, the thoughts and the words about all of this, to action. That the hizmet movement is about not just thinking and talking, but acting to improve the world, whether it is in educating children, or whether it is in broadening the mindset of university students, or whether it is in social action, a whole range of activities that benefit the community at large, the diverse community. By diverse, I mean different religions, different ethnicities, different races, different nat nationalities. All of that is part of the purview of the Hizmet movement, which puts in action the thoughts that one can see encompass Socrates here and Rumi there and Einstein here and Rutherford there all coming to focus in a particular way through Gulen's writing and then his teaching and then those who follow him, those who admire him, those who are inspired by him to do the things they do for the most part as volunteers. They're not being paid to do many of the things they do. And as someone who 
for example, has visited a number of the schools that have been inspired by Yulen and founded by the movement, one of the things that has struck me is that the teachers in those schools, the administrators in those schools, don't just talk the talk, they walk the walk. They're there at all hours. They're available for their students. They help them grow. And the kind of curricula that they shape are broad-based curricula that deal with everything from the arts and sports to science, literature, philosophy, and theology. So this is a remarkable person who has inspired a remarkable series of developments for which that word hismet and the phrase hismet movement I think is a nice, simple, concise statement.